Now that we've set up the stock and the coordinate system for operation one, it's time to create the tool paths. Um, this top face, we will have it be operation one, and then this side here would be operation two, the bottom side would be operation three, and then the back side would be operation four. The machinist would actually machine operation one, unclamp the part, rotate it 90 degrees away from them, reclamp the part to do operation two, and then continue that process all the way through operation four. That is the convention that we use within the class and within the team um, to reduce the number of errors um, in the machining process. If you orient the part incorrectly and you run the wrong operation on the wrong face, you just mess up the part. And so we found that this works pretty well. So the first thing that I want you to do is change this setup, whatever number it says there, to op1 and rename it to op1 for operation 1. So th what we're really going to do is we're going to drill these holes and we're going to then contour this edge and then we're going to make a pattern so it makes two of them. So I'm going to click drill and it brings up a window like this and then I'm going to click tool. I'm going to scroll down to the Tahoma Robotics Club or TRC milling tools and choose tool 17 which is what we call our various drill bit. Notice um, the diameter of the bit is recorded in here as 0.1495 inches. However, we swap a different drill bits into tool number 17 all of the time. It turns out that the holes for um, these holes in, in this part have a diameter of 0.1695 inches, which is the close fit um, hole for a number eight screw which is um, the, the common screws that we're using to assemble the VEX things. So um, we only have really two tool drill bit holders. One is tool 16, which we reserve for a 0.196 drill bit, which is um, a close fit for a close fit hole for a number 10 screw. But then we use tool 17 as a various drill bit. Since you don't necessarily have um, the, this tool library, what you can do instead is just go to inch um, drills and select a drill bit that is 0.1695 inches in diameter. So now that I have that um, drill bit selected, I'm just going to click um, the geometry here and click a hole. And instead of clicking all of the holes, I'm just going to go select holes of the same diameter. And it's already optimizing the order in which it's going to machine them. Um, there are some different options that you can use here, but um, I typically don't um, worry about that. And then the next thing that we want to do is look at how, how deep we want to drill. What I typically do here is on the bottom height, instead of choosing the whole bottom, um, I choose just origin and or absolute and then just define the bottom. Now the thickness of the wall is 0.125 or an eighth of an inch so I'm going to go negative 0.125. But if you look at that, I'm going to zoom in here, you can see that the drill bit's only going to go down, the tip of the drill bit's only going to go down negative 0.125 which means that it doesn't um, go all the way through the material. So that's why we select this option, drill through whole bottom. And that ensures that we go that extra little depth. And I always do a breakthrough. Um, 20 thousandths at a minimum, typically, when I'm cutting into air. And you can see that it goes a little bit further. Um, sometimes I even go more just to make sure. 50 thousandths. You might wonder why um, could you even go further. And you can. The only drawback would be time, because it takes time to drill deeper and so if you're really trying to optimize you don't want to be drilling a bunch of air but we'll leave it at 50 thousandths and then click OK. So now we have um, the drilling operation done and the next thing that we're going to do is just contour this edge and then make a pattern and so um, the next part is I'm going to go 2D contour 
We don't want to be contouring with a drill bit, so we're going to do that with an end mill. So I'm going to go Tool, scroll down here to TRC Milling Tools. We're going to choose a quarter inch flat end mill, which in our tool library is tool number four. Notice we don't have a lot of tools. We just have a handful of commonly used ones. So we're going to use a quarter inch flat end mill. And I've already set the um, feeds and the speeds for um, aluminum. And so that tool is really already set up for all the specific um, speeds that we're going to be using. So I'm going to go select. And then under geometry, Basically, I want just this edge. Notice it doesn't allow me just initially to select that edge. It selects the entire perimeter. But if I click on it once and then click one more time, left click, then I can click this edge. Then it just highlights that side and then I can click accept current contour. The next thing I want to do is go to the height. I actually don't want to cut all the way through. I want to leave a very thin skin um, that we can cut out later. Because as we turn the part, um, if I cut all the way through, then I would ha actually have two separate pieces. Um, and I really want everything held together until it's completely done. And then I can pull it out of the machine and um, have someone post-process it with a file and um, something like that. So on selected contours, I'm just going to go again for the depth or bottom height, origin absolute, and then the bottom offset. Since it's an eighth of an inch thick, maybe I'll go negative 0.115. So again, negative one eighth is negative 0.125. So I'm leaving 10 thousandths of an inch, um, which should be a reasonable amount. And that's sometimes hard to judge. You don't want to leave it too thick because it takes a lot of time to cut it out by hand. If it's too thin, then you um, it just falls apart. So I'm going to leave 10 thousandths of an inch there. The passes, we can actually do this in a single pass, so I don't need to worry about that because we're cutting it with an, a quarter inch end mill and we're going less than an eighth of an inch deep. Typically, when we use a full width cut, I try to limit the depth of the cut to be about the radius of the bit. So the radius of a quarter inch end mill is an eighth of an inch, and we're cutting less than that, so we're kind of safe. And finally, in the linking, um, we're just going to go look at the lead in and the lead out. And this is basically where the tool enters and where the tool leaves. I don't want the tool entering right at the edge, so I have some type of lead in. Um, I don't really necessarily need a radius. Um, we can, um, but a radius is kind of an arced lead in, so it would kind of lead in like this, go through, and then lead out like that. And so I'm actually just going to have um, no lead in radius, but I'm going to have a, a linear distance. I want to start behind the part, cut it, dive down into air, then enter in, and then leave. And so I'm going to have a distance, at least a distance equal to the radius of the end mill, and maybe a little bit larger. So I'm just going to go maybe to point two. Two five. I'll go the entire diameter. And I want the lead out to be the same as the lead in. Um, and then we're just going to click OK. Now, um, one thing that I don't like is um, I must have had something wrong selected because it's entering in like this and then going down. I actually want to enter it in behind the part. So to make those modifications, I can just double click here, go to the linking parameters, and change the angle to zero. I didn't change that before. So I'm going to click OK. And we can kind of see how it's going to enter. Maybe a side view, see, you can see it a little bit better. The end mill comes down, goes across. Notice I'm leaving about 10 thousandths of an inch. And then it goes through the material and then back out. And I'm diving into air. I don't want to ever dive vertically into the actual material. We'll talk later about 
um, how to enter into material when we look at operation three. But now that I've done that, um, we can select op one and go simulate and take a look at what it's going to look like. Okay, you can kind of see that it's drilling all the holes. I can speed that up. I can actually skip to the next operation by just clicking this button here and then you can see that the end mill is cutting. The next thing that um, I want to do is make a, a linear pattern because I want to do two of these. So I'm going to go close to here, select both of these operations by hitting shift select and go to pattern. Brings up this little window. I'm going to select a line for the direction that I want to pattern. And the spacing, I want to do two and a quarter inches. The reason why I want to do two and a quarter instead of just two is the width of this is two, but the diameter of the end mill is a quarter. And so I need the next um, piece to be two plus the width uh, or plus the diameter of the end mill um, away. And so I'm going to go OK. And now I've copied those operations. And so you can um, then go to operation one and simulate and you can kind of see what it's going to look like going to drill the holes and then contour out the two ends.